it used to be that when she would tell people in Cairo uh, where she's from, she would say Beverly Hills. And they would be very impressed. And now she says there's so much anti-American sentiment, she can't say that she's American. She says, I'm from Israel. And people love her. <laughs> Who would have thought it? And uh, the Egyptians, uh, so they, they outlawed the Muslim Brotherhood, which will help uh, Sisi uh, stay in power. If the parliamentary elections are going to be in another three months, and only after that the president. Um, and this is not the only place where the Muslim Brotherhood has fallen. The Muslim Brotherhood, they're falling everywhere around the Middle East. You know, they've, they've already fallen in Tunisia, where it all began with the Arab Spring. Um, They've uh, already uh, suffered huge losses in Syria. They're no longer uh, a power in the fighting there in Syria. They're no longer threatening the King of Jordan. They're, they're still in power in uh, Sudan and Turkey. Uh, but they're under a lot of pressure in both. But the one branch of the Muslim Brotherhood that's doing the worst right now is Hamas. Darn. You know, uh, the Hamas are going through a terrible time right now. They were kicked out of their headquarters in Damascus uh, because they supported the rebels against Bashar. Um, then they fled and made their headquarters in Qatar. Well, there's a new emir in Qatar. The previous emir was very pro Hamas, did everything possible to uh, bring down Abbas using uh, their number one weapon, which is Al Jazeera. Um, now, the, the new Amir of Qatar uh, took away the funding from Hamas and gave it to Abbas, to their sworn enemy. Now they're looking for a new home. Well, for a while they thought that they were going to move to Egypt. Not going to happen anymore. So they asked Iran whether they can move there. And Iran said, are you kidding? We have a charm offensive going on right now. Haven't you heard? We want to find favor with the United States. And so the Hamas have nowhere to go other than Gaza. And uh, that they're being hit very hard in Gaza by, not by Israel. Israel sends in trucks of supplies and food and spent and everything. <laughs> they're being hit very hard by Egypt. 800 tons destroyed by Egypt into Gaza. 800 tunnels that were used for smuggling into Gaza. Uh, this has hit the Hamas very hard because their funding came, their money came from taxing what was smuggled through these tunnels. They're, lo they're losing $250 million a month because of the tunnels being destroyed. What was the number one product smuggled through the tunnels from Egypt into Gaza? Cigarettes. 90% of Gazan men smoke. And so things in Gaza have gotten very tense. It's gotten to the point where Israel has actually asked the Egyptians not to hit the Hamas so hard because we don't want the Hamas to fall. Because if Hamas falls, it's not like Abbas or somebody better than him uh, would take power. There would be total chaos, which would be much worse. And so, ironically, after years of Israel keeping Abbas in power, on one side, now we're keeping Hamas in power too. <laughs> but this is a temporary situation. Obviously, the Palestinians deserve to have elections. They haven't had an election for parliament since January 2006, haven't had an election for president since January 2005. Abbas is about to celebrate the nine year anniversary of getting elected to a four year term. <laughs> There's two reasons why there hasn't been a Palestinian election. Well, number one is that they can't, the Hamas and, the, and uh, Abbas can't agree enough on anything in order to create a, 
a temporary unity government that just in order to facilitate the election. The other reason why there hasn't been an election is because America and other leading countries don't want there to be an election among the Palestinians because they're afraid that Hamas will win. Well, it's no longer true that Hamas will win. Hamas is going through a very tough time. And the Palestinians deserve a better leader than Abbas, who had an opportunity to make an agreement with Israel when we had a different prime minister. Ehud Olmert offered the Palestinians in September of 2008 100% of the land. 100%. Uh, with land swaps, offered to take in thousands of Palestinian refugees, even though no Israeli government before had ever agreed to allow in one, because there were a lot more Jews expelled from Arab and Muslim countries when the State of Israel was founded than there were Arabs who fled the new Jewish state. And they had Omer, who had been mayor of Jerusalem for 10 years, and said, every microphone for 10 years, Jerusalem will never be divided again offered to divide Jerusalem, have the Arab neighborhoods become the capital of the Palestinian state, offered to internationalize the old city's holy basin <coughs> under the control of five countries, the United States, the new Palestinian state, Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia. That was what the Prime Minister of Israel offered in September 2008. He intended to bring it to the United Nations where it would have been approved by 190 countries that month had the Palestinians said yes. Instead, the Palestinians said, incorrect, everybody else is correct, they said nothing. They said nothing at all. They didn't come back. <laughs> they didn't come back to the table until the end of July, when John Kerry repaired damage done in Washington four years earlier. <clears throat> when Barack Obama put such an emphasis on settlements and said the, and equated uh, Jewish neighborhoods in Jerusalem with the most isolated caravan on a hilltop near Nablus, and because of that, raised the bar so high that no Israeli government, no matter how left wing, could have ever agreed to what he wanted. And then Kerry came to be Secretary of State, and he told the Palestinians, you are missing the point by exactly one letter. The letter is S. He said, you're obsessing so much over settlements and because of that you won't get what really matters, which is getting to a settlement. He's a bad joke now. The pizza has arrived, so I'm going to finish. Um, and so because of that, there are talks going on right now. Now, he said a nine-month deadline to make peace in the Middle East. The Israeli papers made fun of him. They said he's also going to set a five-month deadline to cure cancer. <laughs> now, as in any nine-month process, it's divided into trimesters. First trimester, Dr. America did not go in the room. Second trimester, America's a lot more involved. And you know, there have been a lot more meetings. Um, John Kerry met uh, over the last few days before he went to Geneva. He met with Netanyahu three times. He met with Abbas three times, back and forth. Um, and it, you know, two weeks before that, he, he met in Rome with Netanyahu for seven hours. Poor Bibi. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't the first time an American Secretary of State did that to Bibi. Hillary did it four years earlier. I, I remember it because at the time. And when Hillary met with Netanyahu for seven hours, Bill said, I've never been with her that long. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what are they talking about? Look, from these, uh, as usual, Israel's speaking in two different voices. There's two negotiators. Sidney Livni says we have to make a deal as soon as possible because if not, then there'll be a demographic majority between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. And then the Arabs won't have an interest in making two states. They'd be fine with one that they can defeat Israel democratically, demographically. And then there's no more Jewish state, Arab state number 23, Muslim state number 58. Then there's another negotiator there. His name is Yitzhak Malcho, Netanyahu's lawyer, who says 
He doesn't believe those numbers demographically. The, the Likud has its own demographer, unlike the demographer of Libni. Um, and so he says, what we want to do is to create an, an interim Palestinian state with interim borders in the northern, in, in, in the Shomron, uh, in an area between uh, Nablus, Janine, Tulkarem, uh, where there are, are barely any Jews living today, in part because they were evacuated when they withdrew from Gaza, people forget. Um, but that way you can create a Palestinian state temporarily with these temporary borders, uh, with either with evacuating only a small number of people, or, or even can be done without evacuating anyone at all. And that's something that can pass in the current Knesset. Um, but meanwhile, it's not going to happen, not because Israel doesn't want it, and not because the Americans, the Americans are uh, making mis fewer mistakes now. But again, again, as it's always been, because the Palestinians are not making any compromises at all. They're not agreeing to give up their demand that there be no Jews in the Palestinian state that would be created, and that there be no idea of presence in the Jordan Valley, which was the main demand of Rabin. If not, you can get into a car full of, with bombs in Tehran or, or Baghdad and, and drive it straight to Jerusalem. You don't know, control that eastern front. Um, and they're not agreeing to give Israel more than 1.9% in land swaps. Very little you can do with 1.9% if you're including Jerusalem. Um, they are not giving up the, the right to have uh, millions of Palestinians going to the final borders of the state of Israel either. So as long as that's happening, there's not going to be a deal. And the other thing is that right now, whatever leverage that John Kerry had on Netanyahu to try to make, him make a deal is all gone. Because the only leverage that they had was to tell Israel, okay, you want that American military strike on Iran? Well, that doesn't look like it's on the table anymore, now, does it? And uh, so Netanyahu was not so ideological when it comes to the Palestinian issue at all, but in Iran is, um, isn't getting anything from America, and so I don't see him making any concessions um, on the Palestinian issue anytime soon. Whereas if America would succeed in preventing the nuclearization run by non-military means in a serious way, that Netanyahu would find favor with, Netanyahu would give up a lot more than people expect. So everything going on right now in Iran, what's it leading to? Is still keeping more of the land in, in Judea and Samaria for longer. That's what's happening. Now, despite all this, um, if you ask the average Israeli what their biggest worry is and what bothers them the most, they'll tell you. Same thing people in New York will tell you. 